Hello everybody and welcome to another video in this Linux or Programmers tutorial series. In this video, we're going to be going over environment variables. Now environment variables are such an important thing that you need to know, especially as a programmer. And while I want to make an entire video dedicated to them, it's not going to be that long, but I really wanted to go through how they work and just show you guys these things because trust me, you need to know these as a programmer and even on other operating systems as well in Windows, on Mac, you should understand environment variables and know how how to use them. Anyways, let's dive in here. I want to start by explaining what an environment variable is, then I'll show you how to print out environment variables, how to access them in a different way, and then how to change or, or set your own. So an environment variable is quite simply a variable that is specific to an environment. Now I know that seems like a very generic explanation, uh, but I will kind of explain it to you with an example. So a lot of times, especially when you're a programmer, you're working on some kind of project, or you're working on some kind of code base or whatever it may be. And you have values that you need to know and that your program has to access, but that you don't want to share with other people. So let's say I have some like secret token or some password or login or something for a database. And everyone who's like working on this type of project would have to have their own related to this. Like it's not a global thing that's shared between everyone else. What you would do in that situation is you would say, okay, I'm going to set an environment variable that stores this secret token or this password or this piece of information I don't want to share with other people. And then my program can access that environment variable. Now, what that means is that when you go and you take this repository and you put it up on GitHub and make it public, for example, if someone wants to use this repository, they're not going to have access to your secret token. They're not going to have access to your password or whatever it is that you're storing in this environment variable. Instead, what you will tell them is that if you would like to use this program and you want it to work properly for you, the first thing you need to do is set an environment variable. You need to set in your environment whatever the variable name is that you decide um, equal to and then storing whatever information. And then that way, when this user downloads the code base, so they pull that repository, now they set their own environment variable. The program will look at that environment variable, which is different from yours, and then it will use that to do whatever it needs to do. So that's a very generic example, but hopefully that gives you an idea of when you would use this. Most commonly, you're storing like secret tokens or passwords or things that you don't want to share with other people, but that are going to be continually used by your program in an environment variable. Now to print out the environment variables on your machine, you can type env. What this will do is print out all of them. And you can see that if we have a look here, we have pwd, we have home, we have all these other ones as well. Now notice though that the home environment variable, this stands for our home folder, is equal to slash root. Well, why is it equal to slash root? Because our current environment, we are logged in as the root user. If we were signed in as a different user, this would be different because we're in a different environment. So that's the idea behind environment variables to store things specific to the environment that you're working in. Uh, and then obviously when people are in different environments, they can set their own environment variables that are specific to what they're doing. So now I will show you how to print out specific values of environment variables. Notice I've created my own here called Tim just for testing purposes. And to print out the value of an environment variable, you type print env, then the name of the variable. So here I printed the environment variable Tim, shows me that it is equal to yes. Now this is one way to access the value of an environment variable. Another way is to use this dollar sign. So if you use the dollar sign and then you type the environment variable name, say like user, don't press run on this, um, but it, that is how you would access this environment variable from a shell script uh, or just from a program here in Bash. Now, I'll show you how we can use this dollar sign to access this. So there's a command called echo, and what echo does is it simply echoes to the console. You can think of it literally as echo, uh, whatever's on the right hand side here. So when I do this dollar sign, this is telling bash that I want to access the user environment variable, get whatever that value is and substitute that for this line, which means echo will print out the value of user. So if I do this, we see that root prints out and that's how you access an environment variable with the dollar sign. Now, this also means that when you define an environment variable, you cannot preface it with a dollar sign. So don't do that. That's just bad. Don't have dollar signs in your environment variables. I wouldn't imagine you guys would do that, but just want to make that clear. You're not supposed to do that. So now let's talk about how we can actually set an environment variable and, and use environment variables. So the first thing that I can do to create an environment variable is I can use this export command. I can say export my variable name. I'll just say var equals and then test. And when I do this, this will export a newly assigned environment variable to this environment. So I'm going to say export var equals test. Now I can say print env var and notice it's equal to test. 
Now, what I've just done is I've defined a temporary environment variable that is only stored for the current session. So if I close this window right now and I log back in to this server, this environment variable is going to be gone. It's no longer going to be here. And in fact, let's just prove that. So let's close the window. Let's go to putty. Let's sign back in. We'll go as root. We'll pass our pass phrase. And now if I say clear and then I do something like print env, what do we call this var? Notice that this variable has no value. It's gone because that variable was only associated with our current session. And now if I go env, even my Tim variable, that one's gone as well. So how do we set an environment variable that is constant and is going to persist throughout our program? Well, first of all, if you want to change the value of an environment variable, probably should have mentioned this, you can say export and then whatever the environment variable name was. So it, like you could change, for example, the home environment variable. I, I wouldn't do that, but you can. So if I said like test equals one and then I say print env test and then I say export test equals two uh, and then we have a look here, print env test, we're able to change that, right? So that is a way that you can change the environment variable. You're kind of just overriding it. But if you want to set one permanently, you need to do something different. You actually need to modify a file that stores the persistent environment variables. And this makes sense because you are just storing this environment variable. It's attached to the current session. So if you want it to be persistent, you need to put it in a file. It needs to actually you know, be somewhere live on the system. So I'm just going to clear the screen here. Now, this file is located in our user's home directory. So to access it, what we can do is we can use nano. This is a text editor we've seen a few times now. We can say nano and then dot bash RC when we're in our home directory. So when I do this, notice it opens up this file that by default is hidden. You have to actually access it to see it. And inside here, we can set environment variables. So let me go through here. I'll kind of scroll down. You can see there's this is what's known as a bash script. I'm not really going to talk about this, but to define your own environment variable, what you can do is you can go to any point in this file. It, it doesn't really matter. I mean, like traditionally you would do this at the top of the file, but you, you can do it anywhere you want. And you would type the following line. You would type export and then the variable name. Let's just say, uh, you know, does this work and then is equal to thing like does this work? If you want to have something that's uh, more than one line or, or more than one word, sorry, not more than one line. I uh, used to have to put inside a quotation mark. So I'll put inside a quotation mark. So I'll say export does this work and then I'll just save this file. So control S and then control X out of it. And what I need to do now is I need to update my bash RC file or what's called source it. So in order for these changes to take place, what I can do is I can type the following commands. So I can type not S source, but source and then dot bash RC. And this will update the bash RC file or the environment variables for us. And now if I print ENV, um, and I, I totally forgot what I called it. Let's just go back to ENV here, my short term memory loss. Uh, let's see what we called it here. Looks like this one was called does this work? OK, yeah, that was there you go. So you can see that does this work is defined as an environment variable. Now, what we just did by editing the dot bash RC file, uh, this is going to set the environment variables for this user. So now every time we sign in as this user, these environment variables will automatically be set. So it's just going to run what's in that dot bash RC file. It's going to see that export line. And it's going to run that command. And let's have a look at this again. Uh, nano bash RC. If we wanted another environment variable, we'd simply do it on the next line below. So it just runs this file. It's going to see the export command. It's going to declare this variable. And that means it's just always going to be set for us, but only for this user. If I sign in as another user, uh, we're not going to see this. Now, I don't need to save these changes. I didn't really do anything. But I'm going to show you now how you can set an environment variable globally. So for any user that signs in now, why would you do this? I, I can't really come up with a great example off the top of my head, but if you need to do it, I'm going to show you how. So to do this, uh, you do need to have access to the slash ETC folder. But if I go CD dot dot LS, notice there's this ETC folder here. We're going to CD into ETC. And then what we're going to do is we are going to say nano and then environment like that. Now, there's no extension for the environment uh, file. All we do is say nano environment. It's going to open something up like this. And notice that the globally set uh, environment variable here is path. So we have a path variable. You're probably familiar with this on something like Windows or Mac. We can define our own environment variables as well. And we do the same thing that we would do uh, when we're defining this inside of our bash RC. We would simply say export and then we can just say something like global is equal to 
testing exclamation point. Then I can save this file, I can write it out. And what I need to do now is I need to source this file. So I would say source. And then in this case, we just say environment, that's going to update the environment file. And now if I echo out this variable, so echo dollar sign, let's find the dollar sign, and then global, we can see that we get testing printing out. So that's how you set a temporary environment variable just by using export right here. As soon as you close the session, it's going to be gone. That's also how you set an environment variable for the user. Notice we updated the bash RC file from the home directory. If we were signed in as say Tim, we would do this again in the home directory. And then to set something globally, you go into slash ETC and the environment file and you can set the environment variable there. Now, the last thing I will show you how to do is to unset or remove an environment variable. So if you want to remove an environment variable that you've exported in the uh, in the session. So when I say session again, that means like if you sign out, it's going to be gone. What you can do is use the unset command. So there's a command called unset. I it, let's just make another environment variable. Let's just say export. Uh, you know, we can just say to be removed like that. Make this equal to, you know, by sure. Uh, let's end our quotation here. And now if I said, you know, print ENV to be removed, we see it has a value. If I want to delete this environment variable, I would say unset to be removed. And this is going to remove the variable. So now if I print ENV to be removed, it is gone. We have unset it. Now this unset command is only going to work for the session. So this is not going to remove something from your bash RC file or from your environment file. If you wanted to no longer have those environment variables, you would have to go and re-edit those files and remove the lines that we added. That's pretty much all I want to show you with environment variables. This is not something hard. It's not meant to be tricky. This is just something that you need to know about. Uh, and it's very useful, especially as a programmer. So anyways, I hope you guys found this useful. If you did, make sure to leave a like, subscribe to the channel, and I will see you in another YouTube video.